Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, today we're going to wire a greenhouse, and I have some stuff that I, that I used on the greenhouse, and you know I'll explain that to you in the video. And I just wanted to show you, like, right ahead of time, um, you know everything that I used. Welcome to Electrician's Masterclass, where knowledge is power. My name is Joe Spina. I've been an electrician for 40 years, doing residential, commercial, and industrial work. I'm also a master electrician, and I have my own company. I'm a licensed electrical contractor. So, um, when I ran the wires, um, I ran them in um, liquid type, uh, non-metallic, which we also call uh, Carflex. And I did that, you know, for protection, because uh, it's a greenhouse, it's going to get wet, you know, because you're going to water stuff and everything like that. And everything is pretty much GFI protected, okay? So all the outlets are GFI protected and stuff like that. Um, I have an exhaust fan in there with a thermostat, okay? A 12-inch exhaust fan, and uh, that will take out all the heat, you know, that if, you know, all the humidity and stuff like that. And then also I have a, a we put ni a, a nice little cute little... Uh, uh, 24 inch uh, ceiling fan um, and also it's a, a ceiling fan light and is controlled from inside the house and also in the greenhouse uh, so you could turn that on as soon as you get in the greenhouse all right and also it has a remote and um, I had like about five outlets on the inside um, like I said all GFI protected and I have a GFI outside that I put and um, I have two circuits in there, two 20 amp circuits, and we ran a THHN, um, number 12 THHN, and um, black, black, white, green, red, and um, we also have a 6x6x4 six by six by uh, pull box in there. Um, it's a PVC pull box, and uh, if you look at the video, I have um, what we call an, L, an LL, because you know the, the opening is on the side that makes it an LL okay so if the opening was on the other side that's an LR it's the way you hold it like this so we used the LL and you know uh, we came up we came up with the pipe um, the PVC pipe three-quarter inch PVC pipe from the house um, under the deck um, to the greenhouse and we use this to come into the pull box all right so um, like I said we use this um, what we call car flex it's liquid tight uh, non-metallic and you know what you see me cutting it with this ratchet cutter it cuts nice like this cuts it right up you know and then what we did was um i made these little nipples for these for the uh for the boxes you know we have the boxes that we put in here these are all waterproof boxes and what we did was um i cut like a little nipple like like this pvc half inch pvc and uh, what I did was I put this in here, we glued it, right? And then um, I put a, um, a pipe to female connector in here, okay? We put it in here, we glued it, and then we pushed it down. And then what I did was um, I put this uh, connector on here. And what this connector does, it makes the connection with the, the liquid tight um, uh, conduit. And you just put this in here you put this like this like this and it goes right in here like this and then you go like that so in case you're wondering how we did that and then you know of course we strapped it with um, PVC straps and I use these uh, galvanized inch and a quarter screws so they don't rust. okay so since the greenhouse is a metal structure you know I was worried about if you're in there you know and you get struck by lightning okay so we're not going to bond it we're going to ground it so what i did was i took a piece of number six okay and i brought it around the frame of the greenhouse and i grounded it with um feed through lugs the copper lugs um 
which I uh, used quarter 20 screws and I drilled a hole in each four corners of the frame and what I did was I brought it all the way through continuous all right and then I brought it back to my box and we brought it and we spliced it with the ground going back to the panel so everything is safe and um, you know just make sure that you drink your water stay hydrated because um, it's still hot out there all right uh, for the THHN since it was all stranded what I like to do is instead of wrapping it around the, the screws which is not a very good connection you know uh, I've seen people do it I've done it in the past um, but it's not a good connection. So what you do is you take about a half inch off of this with your pliers or your your um, your strippers, okay? And then I use these crimps, these yellow crimps, which are good for like number number ten, number twelve. And then I have a ratchet. What I have is a ratchet um, tool, and what we do is we put in the yellow right here. You match it up with the yellow, and you don't let it go up too far. For the blade and then you just give it a nice tight squeeze okay and that thing is not going to come off and that goes right on the receptacle okay and then um so basically we used you know pliers a uh, phillips screwdriver straight head screwdriver um a level obviously a pencil and a, and a um, marker and um that's basically it with that as far as the power tools go we used um actually uh, impact gun with the uh, Phillips head tip you know to make all this you know make it nice and pretty and then um, with this what we did you know to make the holes in the box what I did was I had um, you know to bring my my uh, three-quarter in obviously I had uh, a three-quarter inch um, unibit all right and then for the half inch holes for most of the connectors we used a half inch um, unibit so that's basically all the tools that we used. Um, so uh, I just want you to check it out. I think you're going to like it, you know. Um, and if there's any questions, you know, just, you know, just hit me up. All right. So um, let's get into it. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the hole for our feeder pipe. I have an inch and a, an eighth hole saw. And that should do the trick with an extension on it. So let's do that first. Okay, so we're going to have to clean it out a little bit and then we'll go a little bit more. Okay, so yeah, we want to clean the whole saw out first, which you should always do. Alright, just get a screwdriver and a pliers and pop it out so we can continue to drill. Like that. Now, we're going to continue to drill the hole into the basement from the, under the, from under the deck. Okay, so we finally got the hole through. Now I'm gonna stick the pipe through. We have a full length of three quarter inch PVC. I taped the end of it so nothing gets in there. Okay, all right. A 
Okay, so the next thing we gotta do is we gotta strap this up. I got some three quarter inch PVC straps with some inch and a quarter um, galvanized screws. And put that in with our impact gun. one and so sometimes you need a little bit longer of a Phillips tip to get over some obstacles which I had to do for the top here so we we'll leave that tip in there okay I usually like to turn the pipe so you don't see the writing on it, it looks much nicer Down towards the end. Okay, so underneath is nice and siliconed, and now we got to do the inside. PVC glue. Looks around here. Yeah. Inside there, put a little bit. We usually use the gray one. Um, okay, usually use that gray one. Okay, which is this one right here. neat you don't want to be a slob okay so we're gonna to try to um, bend this pipe this PVC with my blanket get a PVC blanket it goes from um, looks like half inch to I think it's inch and a quarter and what I do is I put some uh, paper towel on each end so it holds the heat and the it uh, heats up faster. So we're going to try that. We're going to make an offset with that. All right, so we got a good six and a six and an eighth on the edge of the slab to um, the top of my pipe, from the bottom of the pipe to the top of the pipe, and I pour water on it. Um, so it can uh, heat up, I mean, um, I pour water on it so it can cool off faster. So we're going to try that. Okay, so this is my last coupling before it goes into the greenhouse. The offset. Okay, so we're in the greenhouse, and it's hot as heck is in here. Hot, hot as heck in here, <laughs> and um, you can see the pipe on the other side that I have it pushed up against the the plastic of the greenhouse. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bit, and we're going to go directly in the center of that because um, it's hard to trace, you know. Um, and we're going to drill it out. Okay, so this is the LB coming in with the um, three-quarter inch pipe going up. I put some um, flex seal around it, which I'm also going to silicone with some black silicone uh, for when it comes in. And then once we come up over here, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cut the pipe and put a box underneath. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with that. And um, I also have a strap behind here which is very tough to get into. That's why I used this um, little ratchet screwdriver and it was perfect for this. I was able to get, you know, back here and do my thing, you know. So, that's good. Okay, 
Okay, so we're putting our box on. Um, I made the hole in the box over here, as you can see, with the half inch hole. Um, and I put it up on the, the slats that I'm using for my shelf. I'm going to secure it to that with uh, three quarter inch uh, sheet metal screws right there. Okay, so now I have to cut my pipe, and then what I'm doing is I'm bringing this up. This is an LL because it comes to the left side. You hold it like a like a gun. If the opening comes to the left side, it's an LL. If the opening comes to the right side, it's an LR. So what we're doing with this is we're going to put this here. I'm going to cut this, put this in place, and then come into my box. So I got these cutters. These are PVC cutters. I'm going to cut my box here, right here. You make a nice cut. It's like a ratchet cutter. Just cuts it up. This is a three-quarter inch feed pipe coming in. All right. And then we got to measure. Put this on here like this. Boom. And we come right into the box like this. I have to measure what I need for that. Okay, so here's my box with the three quarter inch hole that I drilled out. Um, and I put back over here under the, the shelf uh, slats. I didn't put it on the two by four, I put it on the shelf slats so I can catch my uh, pipe over here. And I also made a four inch nipple to go from here to my LL. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. Sometimes you got to open up this can with the channel on it's so tight of the glue. Okay, so what I got so far is you put the switch box in, all right, and if you go a little bit above it, I have a receptacle box because I have string lights that. So we're going to plug that into an adapter that I bought on Amazon because I don't want to use the um, solar panel because it doesn't work that good. So as we come down over here, underneath everything is tucked away nice, and um, everything is entered into the box, you know. Uh, the outlets and then um, the switching and all that other stuff. This is a 6x6x4 six six box. Um, as we go over here, we get another box. Okay, came in and out of that. Alright, and then I got my whip over here that's coming up all the way up and it's going to ride uh, the truss eventually um, so I can hang my fan on there and bring my water to my fan, uh, my cable to my fan. So as we go over here, we continue with, um, I got my fan over here because I'm starting my guard off. Um, and then I got another outlet here, which is part of the first circuit, okay? And then 
everything is all tucked underneath the 2x4. And then we come down to another box. And then I come back out of there, of course. And it's waiting for me. Um, the flex is waiting for me because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through from the outside and put another GFI outlet out there. This is for stranded wire. These are uh, like 10, 12 wire. This is 12 wire, so we're using the yellow crimps or stake on, what you want to call them. Stake on is a brand name. Um, they'll be easy with the stranded wire, so they're all. This is um, a ratchet uh, tool that tightens up on this and then this way you know they're good and tight so you have a good connection when you put it on your outlet that's what we're going to do now we have Tighten up the screw that you're not using so it don't hit anything once you turn it on. This is the second circuit that we have in there. Tight. And then tighten up the other one. This is also weather resistant, so this is good for outside and it's going to be protected by the GFI that's inside the greenhouse. How many receptacles can come off the load side of a 20 amp GFI receptacle? Is it 4, 6, 8, or 10? The answer is 10. As long as you stay within 80% of the 20 amp circuit, 180 volt amps divided by 120 volts equals 1.5 amps per receptacle. 1.5 times 10 equals 15 amps. 15 amps is lower than 16 amps which is 80% of the breaker. I always like to tape my stuff. Anyway. Grounds down. That's the way it's supposed to do it. And this is also temp-proof uh, outlet. Also, right. just make sure your outlet is nice and straight. We've got our bubble cover. This is a very set uh, when they come. They're vertical, like this. Like this, you could always pull the pin out and put it over here to make it horizontal. So it's a multi-cover kind of.
Okay, so this is what we got. Um, we have our outlet wire ready to go. We have our other outlets on the shelves ready to go. Uh, and one by the table. Okay, that's one circuit. And then we have this circuit over here, which is circuit number two. That's the red. And that goes out over here. That another one going out outside. Um, to another outlet. But these are the circuits for the greenhouse. Sometimes you're not always in the greatest conditions. Um, this is actually my house panel. It's a 54 circuit square D QO. And um, this is where I'm bringing my greenhouse circuits. Okay, I have uh, two outlet circuits. I have outlet outlets uh, number one, which is about, uh, I think there's uh, three outlets on that circuit, and then there's two outlets on the second circuit. So we're going to cut these in right now. And what I do is, you got to be careful because you're right near like a power wire, you know, that's feeding the panel. So you got to be careful with your knife. So you go down the middle, like I said, um, so you don't nick any of the other wires, you know. And then you just pull it off like this. Oh, you just got to be careful. It's good. And then just continue to strip off the rest. What I do is I put my finger over here like this, and I hold the blade, and I keep my my uh, pinky underneath the wire like this, and continue to go down. Make sure everything's straight. And just it's just a guide. Your pinky's like a guide. You know, um, you get the hang of it once. You know, once you've been doing it for a while. All right. Just make sure it doesn't slap. You know, your wires don't slap back in the case and the uh, in the panel. You don't snap back. All right. Get all your stuff off, and then we'll move this over to the side somewhere where I'll be out of harm's way. Do the other one. All right, so we're gonna, this is very close to the wire, like I said, so you gotta be careful. You know, you could start out like this, and then you could do your finger thing, you know, like like this, you know. Um, so it's gotta be very careful. Cut it, and that's it. Clean it off, and that's it. You also gotta watch that. This likes to slip down, so you're going to make sure that your connector is nice and tight, so that doesn't happen. Uh, sometimes, you know, I didn't want to tighten it too tight, but you, you got to make it snug enough. All right. Uh, come down like that. You got to make sure that you can strip enough off of the thing, because it's hard to pull off sometimes if you don't go down far enough. You know. Hold it out and it comes right off. Watch what you're doing at all times. Alright. Um, these main lugs, is, I like this panel, this square D panel, because it has these uh, uh, plastic insulators that go on top of your feed wires, you know, your two, uh, your two line wires, you know. And I think that's great because, you know, it helps you um, prevent a lot of uh, accidents. All right, so we're going to do the first one, which is going to be this breaker here. Let's see, we our neutral and our ground in first. We'll cut them right about there. Okay, give it the excess. I like to leave a lot, you know. I like to um, measure a lot. This way I know that I can have a lot to play with, you know, and then I'll just get rid of whatever I don't. I, I never skimp on the wire. Some guys are like really cheap at the wire, but I'd rather have a, you know, I'd rather have a lot than to be looking for it, you know. Um, right. Over here. 
containers. Yeah. So yeah, I like to put the grounds in the back. Uh, this is a neutral and a ground bar because it's a main panel. So, I, but I like to put um, the grounds behind, you know, in the back bar, and then the front bar I use for the neutrals. You know, that's how I like to do it. Everybody's different. All right, so thing, make sure everything's nice and neat, and everything looks good. And then we just put our neutral in. Yeah. I know it's hard to see with my big head in the way, you know. <laughs> as you can you know a lot of times if you're on a street where there's a lot of cars what it does with, from the vibration I've noticed um, it, it will loosen the screws either on the breakers or on the neutral bar and what I do is like sometimes when I go to somebody's house and they're having a problem and I'm checking in the panel first what I'll do is I'll make sure that all their screws are tight on the neutrals because you know all that will give it an arc on the neutral side and it will cause lights to flicker, it will cause lights to go out, it will it can also cause a fire. Um, and also on the on the breakers, you know, I like to make sure that everything is nice and tight so everything works the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so let's get this guy up on here. You know, make it shape it in there nice, make it look good, you know, uh, take pride in your work, you know. Yep, make sure your breaker is off when you're tying this in because you will get zapped. And then, you know, um, if you notice these breakers, what I'll do is I'll go on the top, always go in the direction of the screw, so you'll be going on the top of the breaker. All right, and then on this side, on the right side, you'll be going on the bottom because it goes like this. You know, and you want to always tie in the direction of the screw because it makes it the most tightest. You know, and the most um, best connection, let's put it that way. Alright. Make it nice and snug. So you can't go no more. But don't kill it. <laughs> Alright. one same thing okay so like I said if you're wondering what this wire is it's just temporary that's why it's what it's doing is it's feeding um, my uh, main panel that I used to have which was a hundred um, uh, and now I'm just going to the lugs so it's just all it is is a temporary um, sub panel right now okay and that's what this wire is doing so it's just uh, if you look it looks a little crazy it looks crazy because it's going to come out eventually. Um, it's just a temporary thing, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, so we're back at the box that's going out to uh, the greenhouse. That's is in, this is in my basement over here. Um, I have everything labeled now, okay? So we have um, a three-way that goes to the greenhouse, which uh, we're going to get to in a second. Um, I got a number 10 ground going out there because um, we're going to pick up both of these grounds off of each cable circuit and then I also have um, one that's marked greenhouse outlets number one and greenhouse outlets number two and they also got little numbers on each one of them so you, you can't mess this up you'd have to be really stupid <laughs> so anyway so we're gonna connect the grounds first connect these grounds together all right my solids and we'll spin them around for a second yeah, 
a nice spin on that one. Okay, you know, I'll leave a nice amount coming out of the box, you know. And uh, we'll tie on this green. So what I like to do is when I tie a solid on with a strand, it'll loosen it up a little bit, right? And then it'll go between the solids um, once you tighten it back up again, like this, you know? And then I cut it off. So that's a nice splice right there. Okay. Um, and right now we only have the two circuits on there, so um, we could use a red. That's fine. Once we're done with that. We're going to tuck it right back in the back of the box. And that's the end of that. So now we go with the uh, greenhouse outlets number one. We take our number one over here, make our splice like that. Cut that off nice. Everything is labeled, everything is paired together. Um, so it makes a nice connection. You know, especially for the next guy who comes in here, you know, say if you sell the house, the next guy wants to know what's going on. Everything is explained. That's the way you're supposed to do it. All right, so that's the first circuit, which is black, obviously. Okay. Okay, so the first circuit is done. So what we can do is we can bury that in the box for now. Okay, and now we have our second circuit, our second uh, greenhouse outlet circuit. So we get our whites first. Okay. neutrals each one has a separate neutral you know this way you can get the most out of your circuit your outlets and stuff all right and then the red which is the B phase okay put that together Okay, always have extra wire nuts because you always get a bum wire nut. So now we're going to bury our red circuit. Put that in there. Nice. All right. So now the only thing that we have left is our three-way. And I have it stripped and ready to go. It's not live right now. So we don't have to worry about anything shorting out or anything. Because it's not even in the box yet. Um, I mean, it, what we can do is we can actually put wire nuts on there so that when we do make the splice, um, the wire nuts are there already, you know? So that's what I think I'm going to do. All right. So this way it's already on there, it's ready to go. And bada bing, bada boom. Just tighten it a little bit. Right. 
idea like that, boom. These are ready to go now. So when we go to make our splice, we don't have to be searching for no wire nuts. But that one is just going to hang out for now until I bring my wire down from upstairs. Okay. Well, there's the paddle fan. Well, there's the ceiling fan. Um, looks pretty good. Light looks pretty good too. Okay, so we pretty much finished the electrical work in here. Um, I got my ground wire that I brought in. I connected to my ground. It goes all the way around the greenhouse at each point. All the way around. We got our fridge in here. All our outlets are in. Um, you can see it's grounded at each point. All the way around. Alright. So you could hook up to a Bluetooth um, and you know it sets the humidity and the temperature and you can set it whatever time you want. So that worked out pretty good. Okay, so this is the inside of the house where I told you where we converted the three gang box into the four gang box. So that's the other three-way switch going out to the greenhouse um, that we finally completed. Um, so that's it. I gotta put a plate on there and we're done with that. Growing up, we always had fresh fruits and vegetables that my father brought home because my grandfather owned a fruits and vegetables stand. And one of the vegetables we always ate was broccoli rabe as a side dish with garlic and oil. Well, this happens to become a main dish in this case with sausage and orecchiette pasta. Also, this broccoli rabe in this video is not homegrown, but it is still fresh and delicious and can be homegrown. Bueno petito.